Hello folks, this is the Cloud Computing Unit for the Big Data Applications and Analytics, BDAA. And this is the first part, part A. And part A just does nothing else but summarize the rest of the parts. And we will just go through and say a sentence or two about each of the rest of the parts. And then you will find each of those parts, which are called lessons, as separate video files or separate PowerPoint files. So, all right, so we start off by defining a cloud. We give a basic definition and a couple of examples of why virtualization is important. We describe how clouds are com comparable to supercomputers and high performance computing, why multi core underlies everything as to why clouds are so important. And we describe a typical data center and its relation to football fields. Then we get into a little more technical detail with the second day lesson on defining clouds, service-oriented architectures. We built everything as a service, software as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, networks as a service. Services are just things linked by messages, or they're actually a service that you provide something which people can use. Then we look uh, for two of the particular, the leading, in fact, the two leading, Public cloud providers, Amazon and Microsoft, and look at their amazing services. And uh, then we have um, some general comments on clouds from Gartner. They are just the norm. I still remember lectures given, um, you know, maybe uh, six years ago, which were just questioning whether clouds would really make it and how long they would have to get going. Now they've not only got going, they've just overwhelmed everything. 94% of all computing will be um, clouds in a couple of years' time. Then we look at some of the priority matrices on infrastructure strategies. Then we look at cloud market share and how much money is being made. I mean, clouds are a win-win. The people providing clouds make money, and the people using clouds make money because they're a cheaper way of doing computing. And this tells you how important they are, why CEOs think they're important, and uh, why Amazon is helping its other businesses by, by through AWS. Then we go through its first key technology, virtualization, which is done through hypervisors and the various different ways you can do this. KVM, Zen, Docker, which is a container technology, and OpenStack, which is the largest open source um, virtualization technology. Complete system, rather complicated and too hard for actually us to use it in our, my research group. OpenStack is just too complicated. So then we look at the infrastructure with two lessons. Uh, we look at data center trends and their technologies. We look how they're distributed geographically, the impact on electricity, namely green computing, and also the total sizes of clouds, including an analysis by Cisco. Then in the next unit, we look at uh, hype cycles on compute infrastructure. We compare, which is important, eight containers and virtual machines. Uh, that's an interesting battle, which is still not quite resolved. Uh, virtual machines are more secure, containers are faster and easier to use. And then of course, we have AI, which is bound to be driving all of this, because it's the dominant application with a lot of particularly special challenges. Other things that it can be used for, like searching in databases, but they're not particularly challenging. Then we come to cloud software, the area where I work. We introduce the Apache big data system, big data software stack, I should say. We look at high performance computing. We note that there are 350 software packages in this category, and they can be thought of in 21 different ways. Uh, we, um, we worship Google, who has made huge um, contributions here. We look at MapReduce, one of their important contributions in pictures. We compare HPC and cloud software stacks in detail. And then we look at what it takes to build a cloud or a distributed system programming environment. Then we look at applications. We start off with two lessons. Firstly, science. And then the Internet of Things and again different types of MapReduce, which are 
correspond to different application structures. Uh, we just, we use um, um, an analysis that was produced for NIST on the characteristics of applications and how they determine where they run. And we come back again to artificial intelligence. Next two sections, lessons rather, KNL are on parallel computing, which everything uses. Um, we describe it in pictures. We compare it with a bunch of ants and a superman, super person, and uh, brains and things like that. Uh, we discuss a particular um, structure, SIMD and SPIMD, a single program multiple data or single instruction multiple data. Um, mostly you use SPIMD, single program multiple data. We compare big data and running large-scale simulations, such as simulating our cars crashing or batteries being evolving in time, and we describe what's hard to do. Uh, the next uh, six sections are particular sub-technologies within clouds. Firstly, storage, data repositories, file systems, what's called a data lake. Then we look at high performance computing and cloud, the so called Branscom pyramid from the very top of the few incredibly powerful computers to the bottom, uh, the consumer um, uh, systems, such as smartphones or laptops or desktops. And we describe supercomputers compared to clouds. Uh, we look at um, the difference between simulations and big data what it implies for software and for languages. In the last uh, page of this summary, which is the last three uh, lessons here, uh, we look at, uh, they're called the future, but really they're just slightly leading edge, but not particularly futuristic features of clouds. Hyperscale computing, the fact that they uh, there's good to put 50,000 uh, servers together or even more. Uh, serverless, which means that you can instantiate everything as functions, which are just pieces of software. You don't have to worry about where they run. The cloud provider to, uh, makes certain they run somewhere. Cloud native, how best to program clouds to make use of their features, rather than just take your Linux cluster software and port it to clouds, which you can actually do. A key feature of cloud native is microservices, lots of tiny little parts you divide the software up. Uh, we look at the 2019 hype cycles in this area and um, for cloud computing. Uh, then we look at blockchain, which is a key security idea, and fault tolerance, which clouds have to be. Well, clouds aren't actually, but they're fault tolerant, they're not faultless, they have faults. But they have well-defined ways of coping with those faults. So that's um, it. Thank you. Now we get on with the actual lessons.